Okay, so I guess we should do our intro. So we are, yeah, I guess so. We are Hydro Man Ran, a YouTube channel that sometimes likes to call ourselves a podcast, but we aren't because we don't cast anything. Um, but I am Kevin, and this is my co-host. I am Andrew. And um, yeah, so we talk about movies and video games. So stick with us. Hope you enjoy it. Um, if you don't, please leave a nasty comment uh, down below because that does actually help us help out even in the algorithm. Even if it's negative, it doesn't matter. We appreciate that. Um, so I uh, guess we'll jump right into it. So today, the movie we're talking about is the 2021 film Censor. Um, it's a psychological horror film um, directed by, I'm going to mispronounce this, and if I do, I will put in a cut of these people saying their own names, Prano, Prano Baby Bailey Bond, Bond. Um, and she's also the co-writer with Anthony Fletcher. And it's starring, the main star is Naeem Alger. My name is Neve Alger. That's how you say her name. Um, Sounds right. So I hope we're correct there. Uh, if not, I'll edit a, I'll, I'll do a, a, a video clip of uh, me screwing up names. Because with that and Sweek It In, I'm sure we're going to be mispronouncing a lot of stuff today. Um, but... This is a movie, this is my pick for this week. So every, uh, to give you a little more information on the podcast to the watchers, because Andrew already knows this, I'm not talking to him now. Um, uh, every other week, um, one of us picks a movie and the other one picks a video game. So this was my pick. Um, this is one of my favorite movies from 2021. Um, I'll say this, I'm not going to say it's the best movie from 2021. I think there were better movies, but in terms of one of my favorites, the movie I've rewatched the most, um, the movie that has mentally um, stuck with me, and, and, and I I've, I've just think about it all the time, it's this movie, Censor. Um, and normally, I don't think we're going to normally do movies this recent, because um, I, I don't know. I think I think there's a lot of other movies we want to watch. I was just kind of making Andrew watch this one because this is one of my recent favorites. And I think it's a very underrated film that not a lot of people have watched. Um, so normally I won't do this, but I am going to warn of spoilers because I don't think we can really talk about this and why I love it so much. And maybe why I don't think Andrew loves it as much without spoiling it. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and say, I think it's great. It's available on Hulu. If you have that service, you can stream it on there. Um, Andrew, uh, you want to give the people your quick opinion on it? We can get, jump in the details. Yeah. Um, I didn't think it was a bad movie per se. I, it, I was definitely glad that I saw it. Um, I probably only recommend it to like hardcore horror fans, um, I enjoyed, I enjoyed the story. My biggest issue, honestly, was I felt that they had like a really good story there. They could talk a lot about like mental health, a lot about her. Past. And what I noticed, at least in, in what I was reading, it seemed like a lot of people were kind of upset that the ending was too, like too questionable, like too, uh, like everyone's wondering what happened. I had the exact opposite issue. I I was upset that it seemed like it was very clear about what happened, and it seemed like they were trying to talk more about a story, but they didn't really delve into it. It seemed like they had like a very shallow story, in my opinion, where I felt there was a lot of material. There's like a really good surface where they could really build a really deep story on that, where it seemed like it just kind of it seemed like it was just over before it began almost. Okay. So I think I like it for maybe the reasons you don't like it. Um, right. So for me, like this movie is under 90 minutes long. It's uh, it's like 84 minutes or something like that. It's a quick, yeah. it's a quick watch. Um, 
but it's very slow. Um, I, to, to me, it's a character study more than it is a plot driven narrative. Um, and I think, I mean, there's definitely a plot there. I think there's definitely a story. Um, and, I, but I think it's, I think it's very specifically about a certain thing, not so much. I understand what you're saying about how it's about mental health, but I think it's about, um, I think it's more about, uh, literally the title being censoring. So censoring right. out, uh, you know, uh, censoring movies, censoring, not so much like a, it's not really like a first amendment type movie. I don't want people getting that idea. Um, I mean, obviously it's not cause it's a British film. Um, so they don't have the first amendment there. They don't care about it. You know, like Americans do. Um, this movie reminded me of another movie that I really like called the machinist. Have you ever heard of that? Yes. Yes. I love, I love that movie. Okay. So, so this one reminded me very much of that movie, but I think it has a little bit more of, uh, uh, I, th I think this one, it's a little bit easier to understand, uh, when she's in her psychosis and when she's mm -hmm. not like when, when you're seeing what's really happening versus when you're seeing everything that's happening in her head and, right. um, that movie is anything but black and white. Like you, like you find out what happened in the machinist, but you don't really know um, the. You don't really know throughout the film what's real and what's not real. Um, so I do I think like that's kind of what I was wanting. Though. I, I was kind of wanting to, to actually end up like wondering what wondering what was real, what was fake. Uh, right. Because I, I I like I I really like your comparison. I think. And I think that's kind of what I was kind of what I was hoping for. So you want a little bit more mystique? Yeah. Um, and at the very least, I mean, there there are certain things I didn't like. Like I just didn't enjoy the visuals, but I didn't think they were bad. They just weren't something that I personally enjoyed. So I, I don't really want to want to comment on that too much. Um, I think it's I, I think it really is more just it felt like it had two ways it, it could go and it didn't really fully go either way. It could have gone into more of a detailed story on, on the uh, censors and like the video nasties of the eighties um, and all that, um, which it kind of does in the first half. And then the second half, it focuses on her starting to unravel and reveal that she's basically been, 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 been blocking out all these memories. And it, I guess I was just kind of disappointed that I didn't get either story. Okay. And I I love the story we got personally, and and not even really the story. I, I love the character study that we got because right. I really I really do think that's what it is. I think I I think you wanted something that the director and the writer didn't really care about giving the audience. I think they were interested in something completely different. And I mean I I I think that's one of the reasons why I wanted to do this podcast with you, because I think you're able to express like, it's not a bad movie. It just wasn't a movie for me or wasn't a movie. I was in a headspace to watch at that point in time. And right. that's, that's an important piece of criticism that I think the internet fails to, fails to acknowledge. Like there's a, you know, like I said at the beginning, like this is one of my favorite movies from 2021, but I don't think it's the best movie from 2021. It's just like right. something that's like stuck with me and I like to think about it. And a lot of people just don't want to do that. Or, or I don't know if, if it's like not, if it's not perfect, you know, it's five stars or one stars, you know, there's no in between for a lot of, for a lot of criticism on the internet. Um, but I, will I think one of the biggest things is people can't seem to get that this, like, for example, you, again, you, you, you mentioned the machinist, um, but you wouldn't say that because, because the machinist is really good, the sensor can't be good. Like they, like one has to be better than the other. Whereas like, which is on the internet is, is kind of how they, a lot of comment sections feel. Like if you say sensor is really good, then what you're saying is, is that, Oh, actually, it's better. It's better than Machinist. It's better than all his movies. Right. Whereas you're just you're simply just expressing joy for a movie. Right. Yeah. And I, I'm I'm trying to give some people some comparison that they can 
decide like if you hated the machinist i would stay away from sensor altogether oh yeah um, absolutely i will say um to my credit and against andrews it does have an 89 percent critical score on rotten tomatoes uh but to andrews credit and against mine it does have a 58 percent uh uh audience score so checkmate yeah um i'll also say that i've never been a big fan of horror in general so oh, okay it didn't have the best chances with me going into it um you're not gonna like I, the movies i pick for this podcast <laughs> i know i mean it's fine like i'm 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 definitely open to seeing movies that i'm not typically a fan of the genre as like movies like uh like all the slasher films i just like from like the 80s 70s 80s and 90s i just don't care for but if there's like a really deep story there i can get into it like uh uh it uh it follows i think uh, i think a phenomenal movie um, it is yes that maybe that's a fantastic maybe, film maybe one of my one of my favorites despite it being horror um it's just right you know for me personally but well, I did, i'm gonna I give some other I want to give some other horror movies that I thought of while watching this film so people kind of understand this movie. Um, Black Swan. Do you remember that? Yeah. Is that a horror? Um, it's a psychological horror, horror film. Yeah. I thought of it more as like thriller, I guess, but I guess I guess that's like a subgenre. Yeah, but I mean, this is, in a lot of ways, this is a thriller film at all. I mean, like a lot of people say if there's sure. nothing really supernatural is a really horror mm -hmm. film so i think and you know it's one of those things where genres are kind of a gray area sometimes um, that's true that's true gerald's game was another one that came to my mind um, that was an excellent movie I, I love that movie yeah mike flanagan he did he's does some of the best stuff on netflix right now um mm -hmm. midsommar and the lighthouse both thought of those Mid still haven't seen lighthouse uh mid midsommar is really good yeah which uh, that's another one that's very divisive a lot of people seem to either love or hate that one where i am i read kind of a middle ground where i'm like it was good but i think it could have been better like there is but yeah we might have to do that movie sometime because i do need to rewatch it um and then it was, the it was done in, it was done in such a way where it's like they're trying to make you pick a side it, it it really doesn't want you to be a middle ground movie no it doesn't yeah it's that, that director does not like middle ground. Um, and then the last movie I kind of thought of uh, uh, thinking about this film is Jacob's Ladder. So it's another I one. I haven't seen that one yet. Um, that one's a little bit more just, yeah, that one's a little bit uh, esoteric. I mean, it's straightforward. I think everybody knows the, uh, the, the ending of Jacob's Ladder, but yeah. Um, so I think I people, might actually. Is it? Does he end up in like Vietnam? No, that's. It, there's a a lot of flashbacks where he's in Vietnam. Okay. And it's, he's he's almost. God, it's been years since I've watched it. It almost feels a little bit like um, Slaughterhouse Five, where he's kind of he feels like a man at a time, like he keeps jumping back and forth. Um, I have no idea what Slaughterhouse Five is uh i think the kurt vonnegut book it's a it's a movie too it was an okay movie it wasn't it was, a, it was interesting how they did it um but yeah you know it's yeah. it's it's a really good sci-fi book and it's a okay late seven or early 70s i think uh, uh science fiction movie um but I guess uh i'll give uh for those who have stuck around a little bit i'll give a, a brief plot synopsis. I think to Andrew's point, it's, you know, there's not a lot of a plot. There's a lot of scenes. A lot of things happen in the movie, but it's not really heavy, heavily plot driven. Um, so our main character, Enid, um, is a censor in Great Britain in the early 80s. And they're, um, they're going through their kind of, uh, at, at the same time, America's going through um, what's known as the satanic panic, where everything is evil, the Smurfs are evil, and trying to get you, KISS stands for Knights in the Service of Satan, and Dungeons and Dragons are evil, and all that kind of stuff. 
and they have another thing they have what's called the video nasties in great britain where they're um censoring and even banning outright um a lot of horror films um you know some pretty famous ones that were on the video nasties list the original uh the evil dead the first friday the 13th um the original nightmare night of the living dead uh there is uh, the thing. John Carpenter's the thing was was on there. Texas Chainsaw Massacre, Cannibal Holocaust. Um, there's a lot of movies that were that were on there that were either censored. They had, you know, a lot of them. When you read up on it, it was like less than a minute um, of footage cut out. It was like basically it was like the kills, like it was the blood that they cut out that they would allow the movie through for the most part. Um, gotcha. So Enid is a censor. So she's the one that watches these films uncut and she decides, oh, we need to cut five seconds of this kill here. We need to, you know, you know, the the gouging of the eyes unnecessary. We can we can remove that entire kill altogether or whatever like that. She's a censor that decides that. Um, at the start of the film, we find out she has a parent with her or she has a dinner with her parents and her parents hand her the death certificate of her sister who's been missing for probably about 20 years by this time when she was a little girl, her and her sister went to the woods and her little sister got lost. She seems to have uh, um, censored uh, uh, you know, what exactly happened in the woods. She doesn't really know what happened to her sister. Um, there's a scene later on where you even find out that the parents maybe even blame her a little bit for her sister uh, disappearing. And then on top of that, uh, right after that happens, that starts her decline, but then um, a, uh, a man kills his family. We don't see any of this, but um, a man kills his family and it's similar to a movie that she had actually reviewed and censored earlier. And she didn't, she, I think she left it basically uncut, I think is what, is what they, uh, uh, is what they lean to in the movie. Um, and it comes out the, that they, uh, the newspaper finds out that she was the one that actually censored the film or, or, or left it uncensored, I should say. And so everybody starts blaming her for this man's horrible murder. Um, she kind of descends then. She has to review this horror film and it's about two girls in the woods and one of them dies. Um, and she begins to have this thought that maybe this actress um, is her little sister and has been missing and was kidnapped. And she just keeps on going into this downward spiral um, until at the end of the film, spoilers, she kills two people on the side of the movie, runs after this girl, uh, kidnaps her. And in a fit of psychosis, takes her to her house and drops her off with her parents. And she is mentally unhinged and completely gone at that point in time. And that's how the movie ends. So if you like nice, tidy bow on your film and, and everything tied up, it's not that kind of film. I think it's not, I don't think it's a necessarily an esoteric ending. I think it's pretty obvious what happen, happens at the ending, but I can get why some people, they, they might find that um, unsatisfactory ending. That's pretty much the plot, um, and that's kind of why I love it. I love it <laughs> because that is that is, the plot's very straightforward. It's about the characters' just gradual descent into madness the entire film, and there's so many beautiful ways I feel, and I know that's probably kind of weird to say that the uh, director and editor. Uh, used to show that descent that I just I love like the how they change the color palette when she's kind of in one of her more fugue states there's a lot more neons and things like that when she's like when everything's normal and you know everything's going on fine like it's it's a very plain and muted uh, color palette but then you know you'll see like flashes of like neon pink somewhere in the scene and you know okay she's in her psychosis I kind of picked that up on my third viewing. I didn't necessarily, I'm not some great film critic that caught that on, you know, that's that's not something you catch on your right, first, right. first viewing, I don't think. Um, maybe you did, I didn't know. No, it was probably my second or third one too. I will say a couple of things that I really enjoy about it was um, near the end, or maybe, uh, no, it was probably about halfway through, the um, 
I think it's called the uh, as the uh, aspect ratio. Slow is like slowly pulling in on the film. It's a, it goes. starts at exactly one hour into the film. Okay. And the aspect ratio over the course of the next eight to 10 minutes um, up until the director calls cut in that mm -hmm. scene after, after she kills the beast man, it goes from 16.9, which is what we know as litter box, um, to the 4.3, which is a classic VHS ratio. Gotcha. Um, yeah, now that's, that's one of the things I love too. I thought that scene, that whole thing. And when I was watching the first time, I didn't notice it till pretty deep into it. And all of a sudden, I was like, "Whoa, like what's going on?" And then all, and then after looking up and everything, I I, I found that out. So I thought I thought that was really good. Um, I also one thing I enjoyed about the ending was that kind of like the kind of transition where it's like showing her in her like real happy like yellow and pink like fairy tale land, and like the, the quick little like the quick little jump to showing like what's really going on. Yeah, um, that was that was that was terrifying in a good way. Because like, wow, it was she's, yes, she's truly gone. Like, she's got no idea what's going on anymore. Did you did you hear what was so at the end of the film? She has the woman in the car, and they're driving down the road. And did you did you hear and pay attention to what was on the radio? Yeah, like there's no like there's no crime. There's no I'm well. It's, it was the the censors did their job, and there's no more video nasties, and so all crime yeah. and all all unemployment have now disappeared, and that's her Thanks ultimate so dream. Nice. Yes. <laughs> so yeah. it's it's really like this ultimate fan fantasy where everything works out good. Um, and and it and, is like a truly tragic ending because I mean, I, barring some medical breakthrough, like, like granted like psychological medicine in the 80s was pretty poor so she's you know gone like that's it there's no there's no coming back for her at that point and one of the things i really loved and i caught it the second time through so there's a scene in, in about the middle of the film where she goes into a um video rental store mm -hmm. and she's looking to get like a bootleg copy because it's illegal to like show these a lot of these movies um mm -hmm in Great Britain, so it's kind of under the counter. It's almost like a drug deal to, to get these films. But before she goes to the counter to get the film, she's drawn to another film. She's like in like the family section or the comedy section or something like that. She's drawn to a film called The, the Day the World Began. Oh. And it's this really happy cover and it's this loving family and it's this per picture perfect house and yard and there's this beautiful rainbow behind the house in the sky and it is an exact like that is exactly what her mind replicates at the end of the film is this oh, is this okay. is this perfect reflection of this video cover and mm -hmm. and this is like what really like what really i began to like kind of really like fall in love with this film like i think it's like really cool is because i think to me what they're trying to say is that um yes horror films you know if somebody's mentally unhinged a horror film can probably do damage to them and they can probably right. unhinge them a little bit a little bit bad but if somebody's unhinged a happy movie can also because it sets some sort of unrealistic expectation that can drive their psychosis you know the right. happy ending everything has to you know, like she doesn't know what happened to her sister. She's never probably going to know what happened to her sister. Um, did she censor it out of her mind or not? We don't know. But there's no clear there's there's no clear um, ending to that story except for you just got to give up and and assume she's dead. And that's not very you know Hollywood. You know, you want that happy ending where everything, everything is tied up. Every everything's in a nice, neat little bow. And this film is kind of anti that. It says, you know, that that's not really realistic of the world. That's not what really happens in life. And and having that as your expectation and your goal can be just as dangerous, if not more so, than you know, viewing some, you know shitty kill you know <laughs> like some bad looking 
axe to the neck. Like what's ha- what, what happens in there where like uh, the director gets his head cut off by an axe. And it, I mean, I love it because I love practical kills, but it's not really that great of a looking kill. Like it's kind of, it's, it's a little on the cheap side. Like I, I feel like they intentionally kind of made it cheap and a little bit bad as kind of a nod to these old films where that, you know, the kills didn't always necessarily look good or even realistic. I think that was a point of like the whole kind of like latter mid half where I'm like, cause when she's in the house of the, uh, he's like, he's like the, he's like the producer or whoever he was. Oh yeah. Um, his kill. Yeah. Yeah. If you, if you look at it, it's very obvious that the trophy is on the side of his mouth. Oh, yeah. So like he's doing like, like, like this kind of thing where, where you can like, you can tell that it's not like it's not even a prop like it's literally just outside of mouth yeah well i don't know if they did that or if they did or if they cut a trophy in half and he just stuck it in his mouth and rested it on his tongue i couldn't i haven't really been able to tell either way 100 percent how they did uh, did that but i was watching uh, either they're pretty convinced it was outside his mouth. okay okay (laughs) but that was uh which I do want to give a quote from that actual episode of Half in the Bag because because Mike Mike says something in, in, incredibly brilliant that I love mm-hmm. in that film that kind of ties into like how I'm kind of reading the film where he mm-hmm. says, uh, dumb people want a conclusion to a story. Smart people like subtext and character building and maybe even an ambiguous ending that leaves you thinking, right? I'm not generalizing, but I'm generalizing. So that's, that's well, Mike from that Half was, in the Bag on that, right. episode, on that movie. Yeah. That was kind of where I got my, got, where I kind of got confused because, again, like, I, I, was, I was under the impression that it was like, that, that it was not, or that it, it was a very straightforward ending, just not a very happy ending. So I think the, in terms of the ending, it's, it's not nice and neat and wrapped up in a bow, right? Like we don't right. really, we don't know what happened to her. We don't know what happened to the girl she kidnapped. We don't. No. I mean, to a certain extent, we know she killed the Beast Man, but I mean, we're assuming she killed the director, but we don't really know what happened there on the set. We don't really know what happened with the, uh, or we're, I mean, I think I think the producer is definitely dead because they they say at one point in time like, hey, he never misses. Right, he, never showed up. he never, well, he never misses a kill. Like whenever they're going to do a kill on the set, he never right. misses that. So, yeah, I. Uh, so you mean that like there's still there's still questions that we, we we will never know the answers to. Exactly. Yeah. Well, I, I, well, I, well I it's not, and it's and it's not neat. Like I was saying, it's not a Hollywood ending where right. we know exactly what happened a hundred percent. Like you sure. really do have to like you can't be on your phone and watch this film, like. Because you'll miss the little cutaways where it shows what's really happening and, and, and the girl screaming in terror and, and the parents like looking like, you know, looking horrified and all that kind of stuff. Right. So. Yeah. And, and, and I mean, there, there are questions like, I mean, I, I personally think she killed her, she killed her sister, but obviously we don't know that for a fact. We don't know if she, if, if it was an accident. And then was it was it a breakdown that she blocked out? You know who knows. Um, same with the girl. Like I, I tend to think that she probably took the actress to her parents. The parents are freaking out. Cops get called. She's just there, kind of shaking and freaking out, and probably taken to a psych ward. Um, and the actress probably is damaged mentally from that too. So I mean, like there, but like you know, that's just what I think happens. Um, I guess what I mean is like there's. The only mystery left is really just what happened in the past. Like, it's a, it seems like it's a pretty, it seems like it, it's going to be like, it's like a very clear ending in terms of, you know, she's not going anywhere. Yeah. Soon. Like, I, I think that's the ambiguity, though. I mean, uh, you know, there's, there's so much we don't know. We don't mm-hmm. really like her. Like her sister missing is is only relevant to her 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 mental psychosis. Like it's it doesn't really have any other bearing on the plot. And most people watching this film probably want something. Like they want some, you know, some they more. They they want closure. They want they want a plot of you know. They want the B plot to get closed up. They don't like the B plot just hanging out there and lose threads. You don't, mm-hmm. you know, 
whereas it's it's irrelevant like it was it's to serve a purpose for the character study it's not there it's not there to really to really drive anything else that's that's not the point of it and i i love that yeah that's fair and i i do enjoy that i guess i guess really what i want is more ambiguity so um what is the name of the guy from uh uh half in the bag who said that uh mike's just i can't say his last name i'm not mike the 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 bigger guy yes yeah but i mean i'm i'm with him as far as you know enjoying enjoying ambiguity i guess i just was hoping for more of it which perhaps i'm just too smart i guess that's really what it comes down to well i think you're you you know exactly what would happen and i think i don't know i mean maybe maybe this just wasn't a movie for you and i think that's fine um it is a, yeah i, I don't think it's very literal with, with certain things and it's it's very hard when when i get in that in that mode to kind of take myself away from it right um, i mean like i've watched like i think i watched uh suspiria the remake around the time that i watched this like i can't really entirely tell you what happened at the end of that film i know there was a lot of blood and a lot of people were murdered but i don't really I don't know what really happened at the end of that. I couldn't tell you definitively. And you're right. Yeah, that's ambiguity. And that's like midsummer, like, okay, the lighthouse, yeah. what's really going on there? But I think, I, I, yeah, I think what Mike was talking about was actually a lot of the, like the one star reviews, if you go out and read those. Yeah. Like, I, like, and like, they're really. Goes- I don't care the really negative all. reviews are like are just dumb people who who don't understand what happened at the end and want want uh, a nice little bow wrapped around their conclusion. You know, it's the people that probably should have been watching, you know, the the last Jurassic Park movie instead of this or something like that. You know, so that's and that's my thing the is there. if you're if you're not into that, that's fine, but just. Mm-hmm go in like there's plenty of movies that you will enjoy go go enjoy those movies instead right no like i i suffer myself by i watch the jurassic park movies and i hate them now you know but i well, I know i know they're not all. for me <laughs> like the first one's for me no that one's that one's it that's fine yeah that's the only one i can i can even i can even remember it's the only one worth no. remembering. I don't know. The second and third one, I don't hate. It, right. I don't even hate Jurassic World. I think there is some fun. I mean, that was a fun popcorn flick. But the last two, ugh, so bad. Well, yeah, I don't. I didn't see the newest one. I don't remember the one before that. Uh, the the first one with Chris Pratt. I mean, I enjoy it, but in a very different way than I would enjoy something deeper. You know, it's right. Exactly. Like it. it like it's kind of like you said, like it's the kind of movie where you just want to go to the theater and just be on which is fine. Yeah, it's perfectly fine. It, made, it probably made hundreds of millions of dollars, so it's good for them. It did. Yeah, and I think another thing that I think throws people is that this is called a, uh, like even on even on Rotten Tomatoes, they have it listed as a horror slash mystery and thriller, mm-hmm. and I don't. I could see how you say thriller. Mm-hmm. It's not a mystery. The, there is the, mystery there. There Sorry. is mystery, but it's not. It's not like a Poirot movie or or one of those Glass Onion movies where you right every, everything gets solved at the you know like it's you know yeah. oh, oh uh, Edward Norton did it you know it's sorry sorry to spoil Glass Onions for everyone. Um, <laughs> And and even like you were saying that you're not a big fan of horror films. I don't even really know that it's a horror film. And like there's there's three kills, and each one is a little bit bloody. Uh, I guess it would I depend how you really define that genre. Right. Yeah. And I'm a bit. I I, I watch a lot of horror films, so to me, this is something different. And this is straddling a lot of different lines. And again, you know, I said the machinist, Black Swan, Midsummer, Jacob's Ladder. Those are probably also considered horror films, but there there's something more there, you know. Yeah. I mean, there there's definitely some debate to be had there. Cause like I don't really consider Black Swan or uh mid 
uh, Midsummer horror films, but I may be wrong. I don't know. Okay, well, we will continue this conversation after a word from our sponsors. Are you tired of feeling stuck in your career? Do you want to take control of your professional development and learn new skills? Look no further than the Professional Development Institute. Our online courses, taught by industry experts, will give you knowledge and skills you need to advance in your career. From data science to project management, we have a wide range of courses to choose from, and with flexible scheduling, you can learn on your own time. Don't wait any longer to take control of your career. Visit proskills.com today and start your journey to success. Enter the code WATERPERSONRUNNING at checkout to receive 2% off your entire order. And we are back. Okay. Uh, I'm drinking scotch, and it's a, it's a really good scotch, but it's burning. Okay. Uh, all right. Uh, so to finish up our chat, on censor, we're going to ask the question: Would our papa have liked this film? I'll let you go first. Not a chance. Not a chance. <laughs> I 100% agree with you. I don't think he would. Uh, yeah, no, he he wouldn't Movies like this. Like insomnia. He, I, I, I could see him enjoying, and I could see him even standing up to Mima, letting it play when she walked in. If Mima saw this when she walked in the living room that that would be it like it's over yeah and i don't think because i don't know i uh, one i think as as much as i want to say i don't think the kills i think the kills were purposefully a little janky um mm -hmm. and and i kind of i kind of loved it for that because i think it was paying homage to a lot of the the kills in the video nasties back in the day um right. he wouldn't he yeah. wouldn't have liked that he wouldn't have liked he wouldn't have liked a lot of things about this film i don't think he would have liked i mean i don't know for sure but i i, I don't think he really would have liked the um oh click the wrong button had something jump up and we're back yeah <laughs> <laughs> no but i don't think he would have liked um I don't think he's necessarily against ambiguity, but I think he likes a straightforward story. And I think, I think he wants a story where the hero wins to some degree. Yeah, but and, is there really this, a hero in that movie? No, there's no hero. I think there's a, a protagonist and she's her own antagonist. Yeah, um, yeah that's fair. Um, and I, I don't think that would have been for him. Yeah. Um, and I, I think I'm with him because I'm I'm not a fan of those kind of kills. But again, like I'm not really a fan of blood in general, honestly, which is weird given the job I have. But what do I do? You you kill people and fix people. Like what are you what are you doing, man? Come on. A little bit. Army, yes, yeah. you know. A little bit. So I'm going to go ahead and apologize to you because in two weeks we're doing pieces, which is one of the films that they had a quick edit of in the opening uh title sequence to uh, censor um uh, maybe i can and, find the uh the uh 85 british version <laughs> it is uh well i looked it up it's not it wasn't on the video nasties so i don't know it, it may just have never have even gone there i don't know um it is that is a movie that's so bad it's good though so uh, i i hope you'll be able to get past that like the 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 murders are kind of some of them are kind of funny like I'll, I'll just go ahead and say that so it sounds like my wife's gonna need to be out of the room so i'll do it i'll invite her in see how long she lasts that'll be yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll add a new segment how long how long did megan last to uh, kevin's her, her movie yeah 10 seconds new record <laughs> hey did she watch this one at all no oh, okay i didn't even offer i we haven't been very long, but no, 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 she wouldn't like it. So I remember when the half in the bag first came out for this one, 
and they had a very strong recommendation at first to watch this movie before you watch their half in the bag. So I stopped the half in the bag and I was like, okay, and then they gave it a strong recommendation. I'll check it out. And um, it was like a couple months later, I'm walking through the bedroom and April's like, I'm going to put this movie on. You want to watch it with me? And I was like, okay, yeah. Yeah. I've been meaning to watch it. And at the end of the movie, she's like, well, that sucked. And I was like, that was amazing. What are you talking about? I love that movie. So yes, you can, it's not, not only on the internet, can you respectfully disagree? You can do that in your marriage. Yeah. So Well, and it wouldn't have been the ambiguity. I think as far as that goes, I think she'd be with you more than I would. Um, it's the blood, it's the blood and the balance. She's just not a fan. That's too sad. Yeah. I'll, uh, I'll put it to you like I tried to explain to Mima years ago because she asked me why I wanted to watch such awful things. Um, I I love magic. I really like like Penn and Teller. Um, all those like uh, I remember I remember growing up and and it was a big is a big thing in our house whenever David Copperfield had like a special on CBS. You know, like we would. We would set up a VHS or a VCR, and we rec- we would record it. We'd fly- find a blank tape, and we would rewatch that all the time. And I I love magic tricks, and to me, especially when it's practical, not so much. I don't like the modern CGI stuff, but the practical stuff, it's just magic tricks. Um, and I, it, you know, like how we were arguing a little bit, or not even arguing, but how we were discussing earlier. Oh well. well did he have a little cut off half piece in his mouth for the trophy or was it on the other side of his oops or was it on the other side of his head like how how did they do that that kill of the producer and censor uh, that's the kind of stuff I, I i love you know like watching uh john carpenter's the thing you know how did they do that like yeah no that's that's why i like that stuff it's not that it's gory or violent it's it's the magic trick so i could see that and i think that you know, that may just go more to my kind of mindset because, like, like I said, like, I'm very literal and I just can't really enjoy magic for that reason. Because <laughs> even though I know, it's, I know it's entertaining, I know it's very fun, but for some reason I'm like, oh, well, there, there, there's obviously something going on. And for some reason that just takes me out of it. Um, I, I just, like, I've, I've watched, uh, I've watched Penn & Teller. I've watched some of those shows where it's like, it's kind of like uh, American Idol, but for magic. Um, oh, the fool us! Yeah, stuff like that. Um, yeah. stuff like American Talent, all those things, and I just for some reason I just can't really enjoy it for that reason because my just the way my mind works is it's got a it my 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 mind's got a problem solved, and when it sees that, it's like oh well, that's not real. So, but you know, it, it, again, it doesn't mean that it's bad. It doesn't mean that you're wrong. It just means I can't enjoy it the same way. Yeah, no, that's fine. That's I can't enjoy romantic comedies so it's fine yeah we're, okay. we're all yeah we're all in a different state of mind okay so, i do like some maybe i'll put uh legally blonde for our next one i've never watched it i mean hey if you put it on there and watch it i, I don't know Man. i mean it's a it's it's it, it, it's fine enough to watch but there would be no discussion <laughs> there's, really, there, there's really nothing to talk about Talk about how much Reese Witherspoon did much better later on and walked the line. Do something like that. Yeah. That's fair. Yeah. yeah. So, are you have anything else to add on the movie discussion? No. I think okay. I'm good. How about you? I'm good. So, I guess we are going to go to our video game for the week, which is called Sweet Coden. I pulled Sweet up a pronounce. Well, that's not how Google said to pronounce it. Sweet could Google can Google can shut up. Okay. All right. I don't care what Google says. All right. Well, you pronounce it how you want to incorrectly, and I'm going to make a video of Google pronouncing it correctly and you pronouncing it incorrectly. So just so you know. Well, we're doing we're doing a <laughs> English translation of a Japanese word that's translated off of a a a Chinese novel. So it's kind of up in the air, I guess. Yeah, I guess so. Okay, fair enough. All right, I won't. I won't do a an edit cut of that. All right. So, this is not a game I was able to actually get my hands on and play. I'm not super familiar with it. I did 
watched some gameplay and uh, saw some stuff on the story. I, you know, I uh, looked into the water margin much, but I, I'm not sure there's a whole lot I can add to this other than just what I've seen of the gameplay style. Um, and real, I mean, it's kind of, it was, it looked like it was pretty groundbreaking for the PlayStation. So I'm going to let you share why, why you picked this one and what you think about it. Yeah, definitely. Um, well, like, like you said, it's, it's, uh, based off a old, very old Chinese novel, um, that translates in Japanese to Suikoden. Uh, in English, it's called, um, Water Margin. Mm -hmm. Um, and in the book, as well as in the game, there's a uh, 108 heroes who basically are coming together to fight this kind of evil, like, emperor, emperor government. Um, however, in the game, it, they don't want to be too close to the story, so they kind of go off their own, their own way there. Whereas in the, um, in the uh, novel, they eventually, I believe, I didn't, I skimmed it, I didn't have time to read the entire novel, but Oh, you Basically, didn't? Yeah, I know, right? I only I only had about forty hours, so you know. They are. <laughs> yeah, part they, um, part one of the audio book is forty eight hours or something like that. I saw that's the crazy. that was the Chinese version. I couldn't find. It took me forever to find a, an English translation of it, and it was it was this horrible auto read. Um, right. It was bad. I couldn't I couldn't sit there and listen to that. Multi painful. Um, but yeah, as well in, in the in the book, I believe they eventually are basically they end up working for the government to fight other foes coming to coming to their land. Um, whereas in the game, basically starts out is you're the main character, and in the game itself, uh, the main character has no name. You are you just name him whatever you want. Uh, later on, there's some novels that actually point out his name is Tier. That's uh, T I R. Um, uh, he is the son of the great general of the empire um, goes, he, he goes to meet the emperor with his father, find out his father is being sent on a mission. Um, and so while that happens, he basically is, is being put on these kind of smaller missions just to kind of help out the empire. Um, he goes with a few of his, a few of his house servants and, and his best friend. Um, following a couple missions, his best friend is basically um, tricked into going to back to the castle they're greeted by the the emperor and this evil witch named Wendy. Uh, come to find out that uh, his best friend, who's Ted, has has uh, one of the runes called, and the um, runes are basically the they're like uh, basically they're what allow you to cast magic in the game. Uh, and his is called the Soul Eater. The Soul Eater. It's one of the most powerful ones in the game. Um, and Wendy wants it for herself because she wants total power. Uh, he basically is able to escape barely alive, comes back to their house, um, where, and is followed by troops. He gives the main character the room. They, he and the, the, the main character and the uh, other house servants sneak out so that Ted can kind of distract them. Um, they sneak out, they go to an inn, and then with the help of someone who later on becomes one of the main characters um basically helps them escape the the empire uh and from there it basically goes to you kind of finding the castle um kind of getting grounded and then slowly acquiring more troops to help you fight the empire um and from store to story it follows in a fairly typical uh old school old school uh rpg fashion um, you find one mission that kind of leads you to meet some people, which kind of leads you to the next mission, which leads you to the next mission. And like you're expanding the world and then it all culminates in the end where you face off against the empire. Um, a fairly simple story. It probably takes 20 hours to complete tops, um, but really engaging gameplay. And it's, it, it, there's a, it's got, um, 108 characters to recruit, um, Technically, 107 if you're not counting the main character. Um, and despite being that many, every single one of them has their own unique personality. They kind of add something to the, to the castle. Um, not all of them are playable, but um, in some way, some big, some small, they all allow you to do something extra to the castle. Um, 
there's one who will give you like a shot for items. There's one for a shot for a shot for defense. There's ones for runes. There's one that if you don't, if you forget what's going on, like like where you need to go next, she'll tell you where to go. Um, there's one that creates this um, this uh, like steam bath where you can literally you just go in there and basically you just watch your characters just sitting in like one of those big like Japanese style um, steam baths. Okay. Very so you so but, you're 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 collecting characters to build your town then. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. And um I say probably half of them at least are are, are uh, playable. Um and the game is simple enough where you can win with pretty much any of them as long as you know as long as you set up your team, you set up your 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 formation properly and you and you train them properly. Um not super challenging um it's it's a good starter rpg i'd say for people who are who are interested um it's got all the basics of the rpg side missions um collecting characters all that good stuff but it's got some things that keep it unique to itself um there's that there's actually three styles of battle there, there there's the main one where it's like you're 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 in a you're, you're walking on the map and you get, get in a, a random battle um there's the war battles which basically involve your army versus the opposing army. Um, when you're doing that, you have four options. You've got charge, you've got magic, and you've got bow. And then there's a fourth option, which is kind of like um, other. It's like like stuff you can do to kind of supplement your army. Um, for the main three, it's basically just rock, paper, scissors. Charge beats bow, bow beats magic, and magic beats charge. Um, simple as that. And if you just stick to that formula, um, it's kind of luck, kind of guessing game. Um, but there's there's uh, there's characters in other. Whereas once you get all three ninjas, it's pretty difficult to lose because the ninjas will tell you guaranteed what the next move will be. Um, so you can at least have three moves where you can just you can just whack them out. Um, there's a uh, kind of a dragon knight which will take out a decent chunk of the army. Um, you can kind of convince the enemy to join your side. You've got a lot more advantages in the in, in the main battle and in, in the army battles than your opponent does for sure. The only danger is is um, if you lose a match, not the entire war, but one skirmish, potentially one of the characters you use will die um, because when you pick charge, magic, bow, it then takes you to a, a second menu where it's got all the characters that you picked and it'll have it'll have them in, in like groups of three so if you go on charge there's one team called like commander's team and it's got the main character and two of his house servants um and then there's various teams down you don't you don't get to, you don't get to set these up these are already predetermined um kind of a bug that may take a little bit of a fun out of it is if you if you pick a team where it's all main characters such as the, such as the D main character and his two two house servants, no one dies because the story's got to go on with them. But if you pick ones where you were basically characters where it, you've got the option of whether or not to, to bring them in, make a die. Um, so that kind of, I mean, it, it's still really fun. And uh, I remember the first time it it, it, it actually caught me. Uh, I didn't I didn't even realize that the character was dead until like told, told the the uh, end of the game. Um. And the main, and well, I'll get to why you don't, you don't want anyone to die in a minute besides the uh, obvious reasons. Um, there's a third battle, which is basically one-on-one. -on -one. Um, and that happens, I want to say three, maybe four times total. Um, and it's with one exception, it's the main character versus some opponent. Um, and it's a similar, it's kind of rock, paper, scissors, but with a bit more um, strategy involved there's uh you've got what you've got three options you've got attack desperate attack and defend and you can kind of determine what your opponent is going to do based off what what he says next so if it sounds like he's saying something very aggressive you can determine that it's going to be what's called a desperate attack now if he's doing if he's doing that it's going to be much stronger um so he's going to do do a lot do a lot of damage to you Basically, you want to defend when he's doing desperate attacks, and you want to attack when he's defending. Um, 
that's pretty much it. It's it's again, it's fairly simple, but it still kind of adds like some uh, change of pace to the story. Um, and it's really more for um, it's really more for the the story than the actual gameplay itself. Um, but as you're going through the game, you beat the other you you de you defeat all the generals, um, including uh, the main character's father. Um, eventually, you fight the emperor, um, and we are doing a, a spoilers thing, right? Yeah, we okay. spoiled a movie so. from 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 a year and a half ago. We'll, we'll spoil the game this old. Yeah, that's fine. That's fine. Um, yeah, I guess I, I guess ninety seven long enough where you probably should play it by now. <laughs> Or you but, didn't um, like me, and yeah, I'll, I'll pick up the HD remake, but yeah, spoilers, it doesn't, I mean, they don't matter. Yeah. Um, I will say one big part is um, during the game, it has a better surprise than I think uh, Final Fantasy VII when they killed Aerith. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the main you've been forced to have them in your party the entire time because they're they're basically the they're basically the uh, dad of the main character, even though even though the um, the uh, the uh, general is the father. This this house servant has basically been has basically been been raising him since birth almost. Um, he ends up sacrificing himself to save the main character, um, which caught me completely by surprise. I I went through several times trying to figure out if I could stop it, and I couldn't. Um, now, if you get to the end of the game, right before the final battle, um, if you have all one, all 107 other characters, none of them dead, you can actually bring back that 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 final servant to have all 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 108, hmm. uh, which is awesome for a number of reasons. But it it, it gives you more like more more um, reason to actually collect them all because it, it can get a little tedious with, tedious with some of them. Um, some of them are very straightforward because every every one of them looks way different than other other people other people in town. Um, but some of them you got to go through a whole lot to get them. Whereas some is simply just like go like going up to them and saying, "Hey," and then they'll join you. Um, but yeah, I mean, as far as story goes, you know, it it ends with uh, killing uh, killing the emperor, and you win, you take over. Um, like I said, it's a very simple, short, um, not super hard, but I think it's a great starter. Another aspect that I found about it that I didn't realize until I was doing, uh, doing some research was that if you're, if you're on the world map, something that's really annoying about a lot of RPGs is just getting bombarded with fight after fight after fight when you're just trying to go from one town to the next. Right. Um. In Sudicoden, if you walk a straight line, um, you'll have far less far less encounters than normal. Whereas if you're kind of doing like a jagged circle, constantly like trying to build up, then it'll it'll actually uh, raise the weight, so you'll you'll have more matches. Yeah. So like if you're the kind of person who wants to avoid these fights, um, it's a pretty good it's a pretty good game for you because there's not you really don't have to grind much at all just to beat the game. Um, I think the only time you really, I really felt like I needed to, was there's a uh, you got to fight a vampire uh, late in the game. It was pretty tough. Um, he was the only one where, if you just go straight through his castle, you're probably gonna lose. Um, other than that, you really don't need any grinding other than what is actually given to you. So when did you first play this one? I first played this. Um, 2002, 2003. I had a neighbor who was uh, big into RPGs, and he 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 let he let me borrow it, and I played it. I probably beat it like four times just in just in that 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 like one summer. So, so this is a menu based RPG based on what I've yes. seen the the general battle. How many, uh, it looks like you can have, what, six people in your party at a time? You can have six. And one of my big complaints is at the end, um, three of your slots are are taken. One with the main character, which is fine enough. And then there's two other characters who, granted, are pretty strong, but 
it gets a little old because one of the there's not too many parts in the game where you can really control your entire party. There's always okay. one or two spots taken. Um, and it would it would be nice if in the end you could actually just decide who you want to take with you. Um, which for the other three you can, but you're kind of forced with these two guys. Um, and an- another problem with that is um, every character has either short, medium, or long range weapons. Um, long range have to be in the back, short range have to be in the front, and medium can actually go either way. Uh, both of them are short range. So just like that, you've only got one more slot for any one short range. Um, not a big critique, just kind of an annoyance I found really on like your, on like later playthroughs is when it's annoyance. Because when you're when you're playing the first time, they are two of the better characters. So you're kind of going to want them when you're going into the final battle. Um, but if you're wanting to kind of just play around and experiment, it kind of takes away from that, unfortunately. Okay. So this was an early game on the PlayStation. Um, it kind of separated itself from games like it, it came out in, uh, I want to say, 96, 97 in America. Kind yeah, of separated in, itself. Yeah, in America it was, yeah, 96, because it was 95 in Japan. Mm-hmm. Um it was also released on the Sega Saturn, so that's kind of interesting. And for Windows in Japan, South Korea, and China. So if you know any of those languages, you can probably find an old bootleg and probably play it on Windows 95 if you want to. Um, um, and I will say the, um, the uh, music is probably some of the best i've heard in a long time it, it's got it's very relaxing it's got it's got that classic rpg feel but at the same time it's very unique it's very it's very homey each area you go to um it's very like it feels very like just very appropriate for wherever it's at um the composer miki hikashino uh she did the music for uh Gradius, like the, the early Gradius games in the 80s. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah, those are great. Yeah. And the uh, the Teenage Mutant, the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles uh, arcade game. I don't know if you ever played that uh, one. Oh, yeah. No, I... I if, if they didn't have the X-Men four-player, yeah, I burnt some quarters on the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle <laughs> one. Yeah. And also the third Contra that I... I, I never played that one. It's Contra... Sounds, is that the one on Super Nintendo, or is yes, it is okay. All right, then that's the one I've played the most. That was a that was a great soundtrack. That 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 is a great game. Great soundtrack. Yeah, she was um she's incredibly talented. Um, she's done a lot of good, a lot of good uh, soundtracks. Um, and as far as the other people, yeah, she was record, pretty young when she did that because she's fifty five now. So she was in college. She yeah. she was actually going to school for some kind of degree in music. I don't know if it was just straight up music or what. But the uh, director, the producer, the designer, all of them primarily are just involved in, in the uh, later games in this series. Uh, even even the director, he's 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 working on a game that came out. I think either just came out or it's coming out soon. It's I'm gonna butcher the name. Uh, Euden Chronicle. And it's pretty much a similar game to Sukoden. Like, there's a lot of characters to collect. Um, and a lot of fans were actually really excited about it because of that of that that uh, aspect of the game. Okay, yeah, because I just released in 2022. Yeah. Microsoft Windows, <laughs> Xbox One, yeah. Xbox Series XS. PlayStation 4 and 5 and Nintendo Switch. Yeah, that came out on everything last year. Yeah. Um, I want to say it was late in... No, no. It was May. Okay. Okay. It was halfway through the year. Yeah. But um, uh, yeah. but it did only receive mixed or average reviews. So you better really be into that series if you want to play it. Well, and, and that's the kind of thing is if you don't like having to collect a lot of things, if you don't like very basic RPGs, you are not going to like Suicoden at all. 
Um, right. It's gonna it's gonna bore you. Um, but it, I think if you're if you're into RPGs, it's absolutely worth it. Um, another big issue, which I really hope that they 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 fix in the remake, is the um, item system. Uh, each character in your party has their own little menu for items. Um, so you can put, and it's it's big enough, but it can use more room. So you, but uh, five of the slots in there go for your your armor. So you've really got about five slots left for each character. Um, so you can put some potions, you can put some, you know, antidotes or whatever. Um, but if you're if you're playing the first time, there's one item called the uh, blinking mirror, which lets you. Um, anytime on the world map, it lets you go straight back to your castle, which is very useful because later on in the game, you're pretty far from your castle. Well, if you're not aware of how that works um, and you put the blinking mirror in the pocket of some other character who may just have to leave for a period of time, which happens pretty often in the game, you could suddenly find yourself without your probably best item for a decent chunk of the game. Which again, minor annoyance. It's um, not not a killer. Uh, just some small details that they hopefully fix in the end game. And a lot of them they actually do fix in the uh, sequel. Which a lot of fans of the uh, of the series think that the uh, the second game is the best one. Okay. Well, we'll uh, the remakes are coming out this year. So maybe when that yeah. comes out, I can get that and. Then we'll review uh, number two after after definitely. I've had a chance to play that one. You definitely need to get them when they come out. I, I I cannot wait. I cannot wait. Yeah, yeah. It's just that and the waiting for that Marvel game to come out on Xbox One. So the Marvel version of XCOM. That's all. I have. Maybe it's only good. Yeah. <laughs> um. Okay. So that's the game. Uh, so you're a big fan. I haven't played it, so I don't really have much to add. Sorry to our audience. But I'll be I'll be editing at it everything. I'll be adding in pretty cutscenes behind all this. So so you'll at least see the game and 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 what what Andrew's saying will make sense. So um, yeah, because next week I think I'll actually be able to talk. Because what are we doing next week? We are doing so. Where's where is it? Too many tabs. Is it is it Legend of, Legend of the Dragon? No, I switched it around. We are doing my second favorite RPG of all time. We are doing Final Fantasy IX next week. Ooh, excellent. Yes, yes. We could probably have some good discussion and debate on that too. Yeah. No, I swapped mine around because I wanted to have because you did. I knew this week I would have almost nothing to talk about. So I wanted to make sure. And it's been it's been almost 20 years since I've played Legend of, of Dragoon. So I need I need plenty of time to do some research and, and look into that one. So that's fair. That's fair. <laughs> no, I think we're good. I think we've covered all. <laughs> okay. No, so. so next week we will be back. Um I might have to edit this and place it over things. So our movie next week, is, or next next week. No, we aren't doing them that, that tight. Our next episode, whenever the hell that is, uh, it's uh, You Were Never uh, Really There. So a Joaquin Phoenix film from a few years ago. I haven't watched yet, and, and I've been meaning to, so I'm actually really excited to watch this one. Watch and really then... Crazy. Yeah, I'm excited to watch it. Uh, Joaquin Phoenix is an amazing actor. So, yeah, okay. uh, this is one of those films. I'm, I'm not sure why I never watched it. Um, so I already know I'll have something positive to say because he's he's amazing. Um, and then the game is going to be Final Fantasy IX, in my opinion, one of the greatest uh, RPGs of all time. So, uh, yeah. So until next time, uh, thank you for watching it. And I will talk to you all later. Yeah, have a good one. Good gentlefolk, does thy body ache and fatigue? Does thy mind suffer from a lack of focus and clarity? Fear not, for we present to thee a potion fit for a king. 
are elixirs made from the purest ingredients shall invigorate thy being and imbue thee with energy of youth. From head to toe our supplements shall strengthen and heal, leaving thee feeling as if thou hast been kissed by the sun itself. Trust in us, as though we would trust in the bard's pen, for we shall not fail thee. Try us now and see the difference for thyself. Visit Pfizer.com today and enter the code Agua Umbre Corio at checkout to receive 50% added to thine order.